Welcome to episode 85, right? Yes, welcome back everybody. I see already plenty of people in the chat enjoying the Dire Straits. <laughs> yeah, kind of Dire Straits. Um, I'm not a big biggest expert when it comes to this riff. I tried to learn it uh, this afternoon um, and it's actually way harder than I thought. You know, it's like... Uh, so you have to get the thump going kind of in one, two, three, four, and you know. It's, well, that's something different and um, from what I usually do. But it was fun, it was fun. Yeah, exactly, and the interesting <laughs> thing is that in that solo, you could really hear the influences of so many other bands. Because yeah. you played that note for note how Knopfler plays it on the record, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, well, if it's in G, anything of the purple would fit. And yeah. if it's, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, it's definitely a hit record. And um, it has the right ingredients, which means the right tempo, the right key for an English band, and um, a killer riff, and a, a good story, and um, celebrities in the backing row called Sting. I, I just learned that reading the comments from the guys. They have a lot more education than me about this ah. band and this track. And someone said Sting sang backing yeah. vocals. I never knew that. Ah, so no, I, 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 I learned something too. You know, this this is Sting, and uh, yeah, they had. They, I think it was, was it on Live Aid or whenever they played it. 
uh, Phil Collins on drums. So, I mean, it was like a celebrity band. Yeah. Uh, that, that was kind of the peak of Mark Knopfler's thing. Um, funny enough, playing a Les Paul and um, a GTM 45. Um, I was playing the M1 in the Vintage Channel and uh, therefore I had a little delay. But if I get rid of all that here and the reverb, um, there's still the wah wah pedal. But if I go. I can switch to my. this one here mm. because makes it easier to play for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the non-pick style. And that's what I was going to say. This is kind of more out of your comfort zone, isn't it, than what yeah. we're normally playing on the show? I, I tell you, because my fingertips, I, I only had like 20 minutes to kind of practice the lick and it already hurts. <laughs> um, because, yeah, they are not used to it. If, if you do it all day, you will get, uh, you know, used to it and yeah. the hands will, will do it. But it's like, I can play few notes or I can do the hybrid picking thing but not exclusively and then if you can look close this will get a, a blister tomorrow yeah <laughs> so anyway okay the, so far um, on 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 this style if you have any questions um, on on the tone here but um, the Wawa thing I checked out is kind of interesting too because it's like to find the kind of sweet spot where it's not too dark yeah. otherwise you have no definition in the higher notes and yeah. if it's too high it's shrill you know yeah, yeah and to... you were using the the high-tech nine volt battery to to keep it in the right place yeah that's, of that's, course that's I mean, uh, I'm sure Mark Knopfler did the same <laughs> I'm sure he did he always has nine volt block batteries well, in the he, pocket. He probably has a roadie now with a finger which is exactly the right size just yeah. to yeah. stick and, it in there to do And the he has to be there the whole evening yeah. and never touch the wah pedal, otherwise you hear somebody scream, wah! <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, that's the thing. And, uh, to fake it and let's do a bypass mm -hmm. just to show you so this is like a the guitar if you try to with a tone control it's a bit too fat yeah uh, because the, the wawa scoops out a lot of the low end and uh, yeah it's one of those very very recognizable tones yeah. in rock history it's one of those songs where you have that you need a specific tool to do it yeah because just with a guitar and amp you're not going to be able to reach it 100 percent. correct and yep. then maybe by talking about mark Knopfler just for the fun just I, while you put your les paul down someone asked yeah. how much does that les paul weigh Oh. Any idea? <laughs> you tell me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's it's not really heavy, is it, for a Les Paul? Maybe. Yeah. It's the the um, Andrea says the best ones he thinks or she thinks are between three point nine and four point one kilograms, and I reckon we're probably about four kilograms with this. Yeah, it, uh, it's not a light one, and it's not a heavy one. It's it, definitely uh, not a backbreaker. Yeah, is it? yeah, no, no. This this is a very. I think it's a perfect way. Don't ask me, but that's actually that's a good point. The only thing I know by now for no, uh, by now for sure is it's a 68. Somebody told me that. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Mark's card in the other episode because of the the inlay and the headstock. This is the, only that 
that's, oh, you mean this one here? Yeah, yeah. Oh. That, that's that's the total hint that this is okay. a sixty-eight. Well, Max is still watching, I think, so maybe he can confirm it. <laughs> if it was you, Max, let us know. And he holds that guitar in his hands as well. Maybe he has a built-in balance and can tell us. 4.2 <laughs> kilograms. Who knows? Um, yeah. Now, I like that guitar a lot. Um, it's, uh, it is the first Les Paul that talks to me and... Um, well, that I have in my own possession that talks to me. Yeah. I played other Les Pauls, but... They are out of reach. They are out of, uh, you know, we're talking about six-figure numbers and stuff like that, and it's uh, useless. Yeah. And um, yeah, but it, this is this is a fun instrument. Yeah. And it's uh, it's becoming something really enjoyable for me. I mean, that's the thing about guitars. It's uh, the guitars. If you can connect with the instruments. There is why we play guitars because it's like we connect to something, and the first step is connect to the instrument, and then there's the music. And yeah, this guitar has it for me. Mm -hmm. Finally, yeah, finally you found a Les Paul, which is worth worth keeping. Yeah, worth keeping. Yeah, and not too expensive. Um, talking about Mark Knopfler, I just show you guys um, the Mark Knopfler, the typical thing. <laughs> what I want. Maybe a nice uh, 212 cabinet, which is a twin river. position number two mm -hmm. and this was the first thing that made him famous that that tone and it's still I think that's that's a killer I mean both tones are killer uh, but um, Mark Knopfler and the, his Strat tone I remember when I heard this the first time it was like wow there's something different and of course, I was I was teenager and I was uh, not exposed to like you know uh, country music and Stratocasters in a clean way. I, I knew Jimi Hendrix and I uh, Richie Blackmore and the rock things on Stratocasters, but and of course a little bit of Eric Clapton when he played uh, the, uh, what was it for sixty one Ocean Streets uh, that album, but um, this was the first time I heard somebody solo on a Strat on a clean sound strat in a way that it was first, uh, you know, all this technique was unbelievable, you know. <laughs> yeah, stop it. I play a pick now. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, Mark Knopfler. Um, yeah, Mario says, please play Money for Nothing with your Strat using the middle and bridge together with the tone pot at zero. Yep, that Level makes pedal. you want to hear I think it is the quirky sound which is mm -hmm. great I put the wawa in on top just for me. oh yeah <laughs> Boop. okay yeah. sounds good too um, the way wait a minute yeah huh. Nice. Yeah. And without the wall? 
Works. Yeah, the strat's closer than the Les Paul without a wire pedal. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah, because of the uh, um, huge peak we can create yeah. in the resonance of the pickups with the tone control. The tone control is the key, yeah. and uh, this is because the tone control is a O uh, twenty two microfarad uh, capacitor, the smaller value. When I put it on my neck pickup, where I have a, a hundred. <laughs> I wanted to um, make the, the difference stronger between the two pickups. So the, the middle pickup has the quack quack. And the, and the neck has the woom. To make it more different yeah. in, in both directions. And by the way, no tone control on the bridge. But this is my puristic uh, taste. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done an episode dedicated to the Knopfler tones or is that something that I still needs to be done? I have done a little bit some sometime in last year, but not in depth. Maybe I should get a guest that knows it properly and then we can get there. Um, or I should practice a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, these days I'm very busy, I have to be uh, honest. It's like a lot of things going on um, and therefore, yeah, it's, um, I'm looking forward, to, I'm doing another gig this weekend, so at least that's some time where I'm escaping the reality and play some guitar, but um, this week was kind of busy with the company and other things. Um, well, this is how it is and uh, then... Um, yeah, you are not in the best shape. Um, but when I do gigs, it's a funny thing that always works. It's like muscle memory, it comes back. Yeah. yeah. But don't play stuff that you never played before, like this song. Yeah. No, on Saturday I could play it, kind of. <laughs> Let's see what's left. <laughs> <laughs> Straight into Smoke on the Water, of course. <laughs> Today's episode is about questions, right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, questions and answers. So the guys are ready with things to ask you, but you have a few topics that you wanted to speak about first, right? Sure, this, see, written, this is a super... <laughs> in, a, in the high-tech way that we do. Yeah. Um, well, the first thing that I, I would like to, to let you know is we have our advanced calendar going on. And in the advanced calendar, we have some nice feedback, which I'm really happy about, because it's the first time we do something like that and uh, uh, you actually enjoy it and for us it was kind of nice to pick the pr prices and um, I think today's was one of my signature pedals. Yeah, with... today, today is a great price. Today is the, <laughs> the X5 Golden Brownie pedal yeah. which you designed. But mm -hmm. for anyone who doesn't know, we are doing a Blue Guitar Advent Calendar this year, so if you hit up our Facebook or Instagram page every day, we have a nice post that you just have to like. Make sure that you're also subscribed to our newsletter. Feel free to comment and share and do stuff like that as well if you wish. But all you need to do is like the post on Instagram, subscribe to the newsletter, or if you're on Facebook, like the post on Facebook. And every day we're picking someone who wins a nice prize. And yeah. we've had six or seven pretty happy people so far. We've started right. sending the prizes out. And yeah, today's prize is this one. Is this pedal. So it's a pretty cool one. I think a lot of people would quite like to win it. Yeah, I mean, um, it's again a Marshall-esque uh, pedal, mini pedal, and the, the reason for that pedal is um, blue guitar shouldn't go into 
this kind of, um, or I didn't want to do pedals with blue guitar on this price point. This is a super affordable uh, pedal and I, I gave it to some uh, friend of mine who is actually the manufacturer of the blue box and therefore he got the pedal and I have a, a nice uh, connection for my manufacturer and as if anything goes wrong um, he will do me a favor because I did him a favor <laughs> and it's um, it's a nice one. Shall we have a quick listen to it? Yeah, we just in case. Let's unplug the Wawa pedal mm -hmm. and use this instead. Mm, this yeah. is output, this is input and this should be power if it's switched on. Yeah, Lex is saying too bad he doesn't do Facebook or Instagram and yeah, ah. sorry, we we know that a few of you don't do social media and some of you did get in touch and say you think it would be cool if we managed to find another way to run the advent calendar and we, we wanted to start off doing it kind of small didn't we this yeah. time just the the channels that we use but so far it's going pretty well and i can imagine that next year we do some some wider ranging stuff maybe we do stuff with the newsletter or we make it bigger than social media because yeah. we accept that some of you guys don't like to use facebook or instagram for for whatever reason so hopefully in the future yeah, I mean, it, it, the, I mean, all this stuff is is hard. How can you do it these days? You know, it's like I like I like vintage and old school stuff, sure. And sometimes I have to admit, I I, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of Facebook and all these things. Nobody knows what the data is. Blah blah blah. It's on. Um, it's, it's on. Yeah, it was in front of a overdrive channel. Um, so the point is, uh, sometimes we have to discuss how we can actually do stuff. And, um, you know, just having a live stream like this is a new format, which is on YouTube, which belongs to Facebook or, or no? To Google. Google. So, hey, so Mr. Google, you know, I hope you're nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, um, but this is, this is how it is these days. Um, and if you're not nice, I kick your ass. Okay, <laughs> you're watching this. Um, yeah. Do you, do you remember in the old days though with guitar magazines? I remember when I was a kid, you would yeah. there would be a page in the magazine, and you would cut out a part of that and, and send then, that in, and yeah, you have hopefully your win some ball pen, and you write in the your address, <laughs> yeah, and, and then you will send it in, and then you get letters, and then yeah, sure. And I remember the days when we didn't have um, you know um, mobile phones and. Um, um, the, the the navigation. What what is it called? The sat nav. Sat, sat, sat nav. I mean, to me, the sat nav is is my hero because I tell you, I'm having three of them sometimes running at the same time because one is stupid, the other one is <laughs> a bit more clever, and then sometimes I have to decide which road I actually take, and don't use the ones in the cars because they are never updated. So. Again, Google is kind of um, the, the, the trustworthy ones when it comes to this kind of t um, tool, not toy, tool uh, on these um, modern devices. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, it's... Um, you know, we are times, I mean, uh, we are giving away a lot of our information in other people's hands. Um, which if I knew that everybody is nice and not doing shit with it, I would be totally happy to do it. But I know the world is not uh, the world like I want it with nice people and that we you know we, we have. Um... So anyway, I hope the whole thing is cool. We try it the best way we think we can do for all of you. Of course, we can never please everybody because the, some people don't even have old school technology anymore and then it's like you know do you want to buy a CD or vinyl so my problem is I don't have vinyl <laughs> even though I have CDs but what is but you have also the mp3 download thing and uh, yeah probably I do vinyl one day not this year <laughs> you should do vinyl vinyl is making a comeback I know I think I think I read that in the UK last year vinyl sold more than CDs did wow. for the first time in, in decades nice. because, you know, no one really buys CDs anymore, at least, you know, the, the younger yeah. generation coming through don't, but people like to collect vinyl because it's a cool 
big physical thing and you can put the artwork on the wall and cherish it and lots of vinyl comes with a download code these days as well yeah. so you buy the vinyl record and you never play it and you look really cool because you have it but you listen still on your computer or whatever yeah but uh, i think it's also a ser I, I still have a vinyl turntable and instead upstairs and a tube amplifier and some electrostatic um, uh, speakers um, and it's a ceremony i mean you put on this huge disc and and then there is it's a ceremony you listen to a full album because it's work to change you know to another song and skip anything now you put it on and you listen properly to, to music maybe i do some work in the house or whatever but it's like the thing and i'm listening to a full album and i have to admit i'm, I'm spent a lot of time with the mobile phone and when i scroll through things i have The attention span of three seconds is like rum dum pong to oh no next and then you know uh, how do I listen to music and I get like three seconds of killer guitar playing and I'm already bored and then when I put on a vinyl um, LP long player it's like ah okay I'm I dedicate my time and my attention to this moment listening to music and that's something great yeah i agree 100 percent. yeah i i was lucky to be raised by parents who still love vinyl and listen to a lot of 60s rock and roll and stuff like that and i also i love the experience of doing it you know you you, you lower the needle it starts you play the side through you don't yeah. skip anything yeah. then you get the crackle at the end and then it's time to flip it over <laughs> and then you go on the second side and then it's it's done and what i heard in case you have a, a vinyl that has no crackle at the end you get shits loads of money from some collectors because you know vinyl is coming back if you have led zeppelin whatever for in mint condition 800 euros maybe i heard from my lawyer because this is the first thing when it's about money he <laughs> like, oh. he's on the phone yeah it's like <laughs> oh expensive wine or expensive vinyl uh, but then he told in the next sentence Fuck, you know, I had all the parties with my vinyl, so there's all the cola whiskey on top of my <laughs> things. So forget about, about money. It was too much fun. Um, yeah. Um, so what else is on my super professional list here? Yeah, but just, yeah, just before we move on, just anybody who's not involved in the advent calendar yet who has social media, take part. It's free. It's fun. It's worldwide as well, yeah. so we'll ship the prizes anywhere yeah. e even to Puninja on the moon if he happens to win he <laughs> he would get his prize shipped there it might take a bit longer to arrive <laughs> and we're doing a daily giveaway all the way up to December the 24th and on yeah. December the 24th we have the grand yeah. prize which, which is an M1 of your choice mm -hmm. so you can have an iridium or a mercury and um, I mean maybe even the silver one but we are running out of silvers I tell you and this is the next thing All the guys that are having silver and ones, prices will go up because yeah. they are not manufactured anymore. And um, one day we will see people begging for a silver <laughs> just because that amp is special, different yeah. and collectible. Yeah. One day it will be collectible. Um, yeah, and the, the thing, ah, today's price. I wanted to make some noise with that. Exactly, yeah. Let's, let's go into the clean channel. So this is... Get put put the, the tone a little bit of reverb and then I switch it. Sorry, I'm in the wrong speak. I was on a, a fender and therefore. <laughs>
Anyway, that's the golden brownie. <laughs> A pretty rich pedal. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, okay, so this was the prize of today. And what is the other thing? Um, ah, the other day I came across our kind of customer service when people write to us, like on Facebook, like on Instagram, and on email and everything. And uh, we are very, very happy if you have any, you know, issues, problems or questions to do that. So, you know, some, sometimes you have, you know, some hum issue, a noise issue, whatever, write to us, but don't do it on all channels at the same time. You know, it's like um, my colleagues, uh, Kai, for instance, and, and, and then he answers the same question that I do Maybe I do it on Facebook because that's the first thing I open and he does it on Instagram or the, the other way around and then it's an email. So we have kind of three people answering the same guy and that's not efficient. So if you have a question, well, what's the procedure? If you are in one of our groups, there is a um, M1 user group and there's the M1 and Helix um, and, you know, uh, or you go to Facebook uh, if you are doing Facebook and right there, but only use one of those. And then it is uh, cool for us because we don't have three people working on, on one thing that doesn't help it. Um, and if you don't do all the stuff, good old email, <laughs> the vintage email uh, is working too, which is service at blueguitar.com. Service at blueguitar.com so and then we can check whatever your question is or problem is and then we help you so that's um, you know we're very very happy to do all that and we, it gives us feedback back to where wherever where you are um, and but don't do it on like three platforms at the same time that's confusing um, Okay, that's this side. Ah, the other one I wrote is then maybe you you are in the mood or maybe you still need some Christmas presents. Uh, I mean, one is uh, you enter our advance calendar and you win a you win a Christmas present for yourself. <laughs> if you win it, you don't give it away um, unless you don't like it, and then you give it away. Um, but. Um, there's tons of cool stuff. The other thing is, um, yeah, we have, I mean, I still have my CDs and stuff. Um, if you still don't have it and we have our t-shirts also, so you, uh, th that's one thing. Um, <laughs> the other th day I was checking what other people are doing and I ended up at Joe Bonamassa and Joe Bonamassa has oh. everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unbelievable. His merch store is you can get Joe, I, I don't know, it's anything Joe is possible, from amps to straps to strings to bars to uh, underwear, headwear, I don't know what wear, but uh, it's the, the biggest store I've seen on the planet. Um, well, yeah, and um, maybe you find something there, um, or you go to other colleagues musician colleagues, the smaller ones, and get some killer CDs of these people. Um, I'm, I'm, I think that's a, a good time to support artists. Um, I mean, music is a personal thing, and if you have found somebody that you really like, and even if it's a, and especially if it's a smaller artist, I think the time is now to support them and get a whatever CD vinyl or something from Ben Grenfeld or from one of my friends um, anyway the guys that you like and this is um, if you know the people you give the, the music to and you know them a little bit it's like giving them a nice book you know that's uh, another kind of Christmas present uh, because it's a personal thing that you can do um, or you can give 
somebody, your colleague in the band that plays like shit, you give him tutorial videos. <laughs> <laughs> or a metronome for the drummer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, just stuff that uh, might help in a way. Um, yeah. Um, this. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit on the cynical uh, tonight. Well, well, how about this? Let me twist it around. Yeah. What, what would you want as a Christmas present? As the man who has it all with vintage guitars, collectible items, his own amp company, hundreds of effects pedals. I tell you what I want. What would you choose? Free time. In the Caribbean Sea. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sunshine. No time for, you know, all this emails and stuff. Just free time. A clear blue sky and, um, like, nothing. That's all I need. And a bottle of water, it's fine. I don't even need a beer on the beach. You know, when as long as the sun, sun is shining, the sky is clear and blue. I can have a swim every two hours and nothing else. That's the ideal thing. And um, I haven't done a vacation the last year because of COVID and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And um, yeah, I'm, that's the only thing. Yeah. So if you have an island in the Caribbean, <laughs> send me an email. Maybe I visit you. <laughs> I give you a lesson. <laughs> For free. I bring an M1 so you can check it out. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I mean, this is modern days. I mean, people watch from all over the planet. You try it. There was a watcher in New Zealand, so you never know. We might have someone from the Caribbean or somewhere yeah. else exotic. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. No mosquitoes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Something else news-wise, or should we go into some Yes, let, let's questions. go, because I got, I, I'm, I'm a bit funny today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have a couple coming in. Unfortunately, they're about Ampex. But we'll start with that, and then we'll move yeah. on to more normal stuff. The, the first one you can answer very quickly. I can't see the name, because I think the chat's gone, but they said, will the Amp 1 Mercury and Iridium editions be discontinued when the Ampex comes out? No. Okay, because Amp 1 is a classic. Let's put it that way. Uh, Amp1, I designed as something like a Volkswagen Beetle, like a classic. And therefore, I invested a lot of money to get the toolings and the housings. Everything is custom made for this amp. So we are not using standard parts. Uh, all these are our own knobs, our own switches, our front plate, our blah, blah, blah. Everything is custom made. And being in the industry for so long, um, there's two ways to design products. One is the inexpensive way, which is you do something and you use standard parts, the classic, you know, can, can you pass me any of the, the pedals? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Ibanez is a big company. They, they do, but you know, you have this, the standard knobs, the standard. Um, I show you a good example here. I mean, that's a great pedal. And I'm not saying that they are doing anything wrong, but this is an enclosure from Hammond. It's the type B, I think it's called. And it's using the standard switch, the standard jacks, the standard knobs. Um, there's nothing custom made, which means the investment at the beginning is low and um, you get something. But if you are um, as convinced and dedicated about M1, I thought long term and that I want to be different. I want to have my own knobs. I want to have my own switches. I want to have my own housing and I want to do it especially for M1. And I can see the M1 format being a classic format for decades. Why? Because it doesn't get any smaller than this in this kind of power range. I'm talking about traditional power of tube amps for a gigging musician. If we are talking modeling or preamp only it's a different story you can get smaller but not with something that actually delivers a hundred watt nanotube or tube power so this format will stay and then i can see we have the silver one or the mercury which is a certain type of player just like on the classic tube amps and the black one the iridium and this will stay this will 
always uh, continue. And um, so whatever we will do, AMP1 will be still alive for no discon never be discontinued. I, I mean, yeah, maybe in 50 years or something, but, but uh, not the next 20 years. I don't see this. Yeah, and I think one of the other points is that we've mentioned quite often on this show and elsewhere is the fact that, yeah, the Ampex is coming out, but that's actually going to be overkill for quite a few players, you know? I mean, for probably a high percentage of people who, who play guitar and want an amp like this, the Mercury Edition or the Iridium Edition offers exactly what they want, and they it, don't need the, the exactly. extra belting stuff on the and Ampex. Even, even these amps, Amp 1, offer a lot more than these amps behind me, mm. you know? I mean, the GTM 14.5 doesn't have channel switching, the GTM 45 doesn't have a master volume, the GTM 45 doesn't have an effects loop. So how um, to compare this, and just because Amp X has this and more, doesn't make it better. I mean, uh, it makes it more versatile, but do you actually need that? I know people that, Killer story, Nashville, I explain the amp one and I tell them, yeah, you have MIDI option and then you can do the switching with the four cable method. And the guy goes, I'm a one cable method kind of guy. <laughs> and I go, this guy is right. You know, yeah. this is another type of player. So it is not about more is more. Some people actually can handle that, enjoy that, love it and do great music about that. But there is a ton of different players that doesn't need all of that. And this is kind of in the middle. This is where I started with the Amp1. And then there's even a group of players who want even more simplicity. If you go for the, the typical vintage Fender combo players, they have nothing. They have something with a speaker that makes a nice, brilliant, clean tone, maybe some reverb. And if a totally luxury, they have a tremolo in it. Most of the guys just play clean and nothing else. And some people don't even use pedals. And that's a way of playing the electric guitar, which is as popular as playing the whistles and bells, you know, pedal boards, square meter <laughs> style or rack system back in the days. Yeah. So this is all coexisting and it's all good. And therefore we just um, make our um, range of products wider. And for me, it's a logical progression from going from M1 to MX. But then I will go to the other thing. My, my thoughts are already for stuff in any direction. So I'm not more, Next step is because the time is ready to do that with what we have achieved on the technology side, we can actually make that step. But um, on the other hand, I totally get it to make something even more simple. And that's as beautiful. It's just different. That's So M1 will stay whatever we do because it, I, I still believe M1 is... I wouldn't change much. If you tell me what to change, of course I have a, a list of things that could be changed one day, but uh, still, it's it's more. It, it is it is more than most people need, and it's so flexible. And um, I I think when you know it as well as I do, you can do basically all you need. If in a certain territory, and yeah, 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 the percentage of players that should be happy with an amp one is very high. Yeah, so amp one is here to stay, so yeah. that's good. Just going back on kind of the idea of upgrading or changing the Mercury edition yeah. slightly, one of the questions that I have on my list is you changed a few things when going from the silver edition to the Mercury edition. Things that you got feedback from players and you decided, you know, to tighten it up, to mm -hmm. upgrade the reverb, etc. Mm -hmm. If you were to say now, I'm going to make the new version of the Mercury. What would you change about the Mercury edition? I wouldn't change much, to be honest. Um, I still like the boost. I still like the reverb. I still like the channel voicings. I might 
make the modern a bit flexible, more flexible now. I mean, this all comes with the experience of having an Iridium and having an amp and spend a lot of time just kind of in that modern world. And this kind of gives me uh, more inspiration how I could make this modern more modern or yeah. more flexible modern in a way. But on the other channels, I like them as they are. Um, and of course, there is another version of M1. And it. I don't want to make M1. Um, I want to make several versions of M1. And maybe I do a, a third um, M1 that will be out there at the same time as a black one, as a silver one, and a you don't know the color one, you know, another color one. And they all have their own character, their own style, aiming at a specific type of player or way of making music. Um, I have ideas for that. But changing the Mercury, yeah, there's technology uh, on it. You have to change some stuff on the technology platform to be able to do stuff. But from what we have now, not much. I, I like the recording out as it is. I, um, the power, no, I mean, um, there's stuff we can do, you know, this, this is how, how development works. Once the MPX will be out and a couple of years later, when all that stuff works, then we can learn from the MPX and bring that kind of condensed knowledge back to the MP1 platform and try to, to, to get more out of the MP1. Um, but this is years in the future. Yeah. Of course, I can always think in the future. That's my job and I like, I like that and I can dream. But um, as, as we see the MP1 now, um, it, it, you know, it, it will stay in this kind of thing and then one, two, th uh, three things can be a bit more flexible, but not totally different. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Jason says, any thoughts or plans to make any Blue Guitar Amp 1 plugins? Or do any nope. stuff with IRs for, for people who use that sort of uh, Yeah, I, I, I understand. Yeah. Um, no, because, let's put it that way, we are a small company and I focus on doing analog products using as much digital stuff as it helps the product. So I'm not against digital uh, technology, don't get me wrong, but um, if you do pl plugins, um, you have to work on uh, the digital domain and the knowledge we have there has to grow first. So um, this is the wrong time to do it. I've been involved in digital projects and done plugins. Uh, Steinberg, for instance, and uh, the virtual oh, I, the virtual guitarist was me, and I w I've done the Warp DSP and, and blah blah blah, Zendera, uh, and uh, you know five six different digital projects. And first is I'm not the guy that is a digital engineer. Uh, I, I know all the obstacles in the digital world and of course I know benefits as well. We all know benefits uh, from the digital stuff uh, as we have such uh, flexibility, convenience, etc. But um, yeah, it's not my thing to, to go digital unless I would have a digital genius. Somebody that comes to me and shows me something that I can tweak and then I can bring in my knowledge and do it. But I'm not personally aiming towards that. So not at this point. Yeah. Have you tried some of the more, you know, the more sort of professional ones like the Neural DSP sure. plugins that people, you know, yeah. they sell for quite a lot of money, don't they? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, you know, I recorded with plugins um, if anyone knows my, what is it, White Strat Magic CD, it's a CD for EMI, which was, I think the, the date is 15 years old or whatever. It's, it's more than 10 years. And this whole CD was, I th maybe not a whole CD, but 
at least 50% of the CD I was doing with my laptop using my plugins back in the days. And I can make sound, make those plugins sound pretty good. I know how to tweak stuff and get a little extra overtones here and magneto and compression and EQ and blah, blah, blah. And in the end, people were really impressed about the tones. And the other day we had the, the virtual band with uh, Bobby Kimball where we where I played plugins only and of course that sounded cool too but here's the point I know it's getting better every day and still there is something and that that was a, a hard decision for me to think if I if I really invest my time and all my money uh, and thereby my security to to do something on the analog side, which is from a digital perspective, anachronism, uh, so old school. But I'm totally convinced of the quality of analog technology and I put all my energy behind the analog world. Why? Because the super old school nerd guys that grew up designing tube amps, they're getting so old they will not have the passion to do new projects or they will not simply be there anymore. I mean, Jim Marshall is that, Leo Fender is that, and uh, I'm not talking about other names. There's a lot of people in this industry that will, not, that will retire, which is great, but somebody has to be there and, and bring the analog front to the forefront of what is possible since I believe analog is still superior in audio, in a way. Which means digital stuff can be as good as it wants to be. And it's, I use this digital technology with interface, even with the blue box and stuff like that. Great. But when it comes to creating tones, overtones and stuff, analog technology is still the purest way to get a great tone. In the digital world, you have to come up with a model which is way more complex than a simple design of analog components that create that tone. And the side effects in the digital world are there by nature hurting the tone, starting with conversion, starting with um, aliasing effects and all that stuff. And you have to tweak it to make it work. Next level is sound good, but it's always like, ah, let's squeeze out a little bit more. In the analog world, remember the best sounding amps are the oldest one here. 57 Tweet Deluxe. There's not even a, a low cut in this amp. It's flat and it's magic. Why it's magic? Because it's pure. And by the way, such an amp one is pretty pure. Even if it's a modern device, the tone circuit is a puristic thing. Our power amp stage, even if it's using um, modern technology, is pure. It's as simple as can be. And that's the secret of good tone in the analog world. And this is my Baustelle. This is my <laughs> where, where I'm at. And I will dedicate the rest of my time to do that thing. Other people do great stuff. And I'm a big fan of um, people that create great products in the digital world. Christoph Kemper, um, the Oxbox, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And, you know, two notes. And, and it's good. And some plugins are cool. That's this. But I'm convinced that's my job good good that's a good answer <laughs> talking of tone there is a tone based question from yeah. rock guitar vibes what's the best amp one settings to get a, a yjm sound i guess that's a, a malmsteen sound is yeah. it possible without the the yjm overdrive pedal ah you're, you're talking about the dd250 preamp uh, the we, i had an episode that showed um the dod pedal that he used, uh, and he has a later version of that, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, Ingvi, 
I would go for the classic channel because that's Marshall and I would use the boost because you need that boost. <laughs> What have I been using? It's the classic channel with the boost on, so I have enough gain with my single coils. Okay, single coils, uh, um, but they have the definition. Um, I put the tone on the classic channel counterclockwise. Um, so um, that's kind of the warmer side. And look at my EQ setting, it's middle position. It's, it's there. It's, uh, it's pretty much that kind of tone. Of course, Ingwi and his iconic tone comes in the combination from that overdrive circuit from that preamp, from this overdrive pedal. And uh, we, we, we have this, I think it, I did it with Manuel Ket Kettenring last year. You, you can find it, uh, or was it with, um, Guitar Heroes episode, some, something like this. Anyway, um, we had that pedal, um, and that's, um, but this setting here, middle position, just to make it really clear, it's middle position, I put even the reverb in the middle, gain on full, um, boost on full, but this is it tone of the classic counterclockwise and you are white vibrato which I you know coming from Mark Knopfler I have no, <laughs> not that kind of vibrato but it's a <laughs> anyway uh, this would be my setting there we go help from William Lee Academy of Tone number 12, Plexi Signature Tones, Plexi and Pedal Magic, and how it's done on Amp 1. So there you go. Yeah. Go back and watch Academy of Tone number 12, and you'll find some more in-depth analysis yeah. of, of how to get this tone. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Hardy had a question about the blue guitar cabs with neodymium magnets. Any news on that? Any updates? <laughs> Is that even a thing? <laughs> <laughs> um, just... Next door, I have two new samples, and I didn't have that much time. But first impression was wasn't too bad. I do an in-depth uh, check with this. I'm working on something, but it already took two years, and I'm not finished yet. So whenever it's ready, it's ready. Um, I mean, wouldn't it be ideal to have the killer tone? and even more power in an even lighter format. This is what we all want. I'm working on it, but I can't promise that it's coming. Um, so far, there's nothing as good as I would release it. Yeah. So, but we're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Let's see. Yeah. And talking of getting closer, more questions about the guitars as well. I've seen questions from William. I've seen a question from Ziggy as well. They're asking about the blue guitar, the 61 master built. Will that be coming again soon? Will they be able to buy a blue one? William says, will there be a range of blue guitars? Will you do <clears throat> Super Strats or Les Pauls or something okay. based exactly on this? Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. So I tell you all the stuff that's going on in my head. Um, we have done the blue guitar since day one when, when we created, uh, when I founded uh, Blue Guitar as a company. Um, we started with Trev Wilkinson to build it. And of course he was coming to a point where he said, you know, I, I, I'm, I have my own business. I, I've done a few for you as a favor. We sold a few of those, fine. Then I tried to, to get more and I got a few more, but the list is, is huge. Um, now we have still a few to come, but the back orders are way too many. And I have to find a new way how to get a stable production and, um, and quality and the quality. And I've, I talked to people that manufacture for other, uh, brands. Problem is so far I wasn't happy. I have prototypes from well-known manufacturers, but I'm not going to China or to, I'm not saying China is bad. No, no, I'm, I just say, I want to find a manufacturer that can do two things. The quality I want, which is very hard to get. And second, the consistency in the quality I want. And third, the numbers that we need. So far, we made it to the first two points. But the, the third point was the weak point. So you want, is it people want to build more guitars than you want to order? Or are you having trouble finding someone who can build enough guitars yeah, to meet the demand? The second. Okay. Uh, because the people that um, are able to produce more guitars usually don't meet my quality demands. Mm. And um, it is okay for a affordable guitar but uh, I haven't found a manufacturer that I, you know, uh, can ask stuff. It, it, it's, it's because it's a business. You know, if you are a manufacturer, you have your wood supplier, you have, you have your machinery and all that stuff, which is great. But my necks so far come from Japan. Um, my source in Japan is a guy, you know, a special guy and but I checked all the necks available and these necks were so far the best ones I, I could get. Okay. And, and so on, you know, it's, it's not that easy. If I go to a, a, a factory that makes, you know, great production work, I probably don't get the necks that I want or they don't get the wood or they don't want to do that because the process for them is not feasible. It's like, uh, too complicated or they don't have the source and blah, blah, blah. So long term, I will find something, I'm sure. But I'm telling this for years, <laughs> which means it's, it's not an easy thing. If you are a manufacturer and if you can build hundreds, I'm talking 100, 200, 300 guitars a year and are up to my pretty high expectations on all the process. Drop me an email. <laughs> we talk. I, I have all the references. I have blue guitars manufactured in Japan, in the UK, in Germany and in India. And I can show you what has been done. I know what I want. So if somebody can do it, let's go for it. It's not a problem because I know when the guitar is right, we will sell it. For me, it's not about the money. It's only who needs another strat. Only if the guitars meet that quality level, it's there. And uh, I'm I'm working on everything. I'm working on this guitar, um, on a 3D model of exactly that guitar and all that stuff. But uh, I'm I don't know if this will ever come out. Um, but it's good for me. Just imagine somebody steals my guitar on Saturday on the gig. 
And then I have only good memories, but no data. <laughs> so therefore, now is the time to get the deepest DNA of all we do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Could you ever see blue guitar in the future if you find a builder doing other instruments, for example, a, a version of this or some I of have, the other guitars in yeah, your collection? I, I, I think so. I mean, um, I, I never do stuff that you can buy just like that from somebody else. That, that makes no sense. We are not a, a huge company that can beat somebody on price or anything. The only thing we can offer is we have something special that other companies cannot offer for whatever reason. And I try always to be on the quality side. Quality is what I want. Or if it's quality and price, I give it away because, you know, why making whatever 10 bucks on a on a pedal? That's not our business. We are not we are not an operation that sells thousands of pedals to pay one employee. You know, it's like we have a few guys that sell a few amps. That's our business. Um, because I don't want to have a big company and uh, have meetings, then I will never play guitar again. <laughs> it's like, you know, Monday company. No, thank you. Um, anyway, so I can imagine all that stuff if it runs smooth and if you have the right people. It's all about the right people. It's, if, if you have a band, you have the right drummer, you have the right singer, or it's a shitty band and it's no fun. And if you have a company or you have a business, you have to have, find the right partners. I have a huge network and I'm very happy about all my friends in the industry and I can connect stuff in a way that is in a way unique because you know the big brands just take Fender as an example they can do anything they want because they have the shit loads of money and they go I want this guitar and make it gold and then bing it's gold you know because Fender ask for it and some manufacturer will do it for for them. I mean, sure. If I go there, they say, who are you? Hmm. And then uh, why should I do it? But I have, I have the coolest connections in the industry. So I can get people together that have a passion and we can do it on that level. And then there is also some business so nobody is starving or going bankrupt. That's more our business model versus Fender that have shareholders that want to see some re and somebody has to perform in all aspects. You know, they're doing a different game, which is fair enough. But um, I think I or we can go and do stuff that these big companies can't do or maybe the very small companies can't do because they are garage style. One guy with tons of passion and maybe the wife that does all the work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, some pedal builders work like that and it's all good. Um, but that's, that's kind of, we are in between somewhere. And that's our unique position. And with this, if we have unique position and unique products, it can be a match. And this is what I'm always open for. So if you have the right connections, bing, 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 I connect it, wire it together like a, like a circuit, put some power on it, which is like money, and then we have some product one day. But on the other hand, small company means I'm not doing 100 projects. I'm, I'm doing a lot of projects nobody sees because I'm interested in that. And maybe we see some re results in the end, maybe not. Um, and I have to focus myself sometimes to our core business. Uh, so we get, we, we get the best for blue guitar. Yeah. But it's like, if you want to, to harvest, you have to seed, you have to you know, and um, some of the stuff that I'm doing, the return comes in three years. And so I'm always open to do little things like that. And then, then there comes the moment where it's like, zack, now we make 
this a project and this will end up as a product. Yeah. And uh, there's stuff to come. Exciting times. Yeah. So there course. you go. I got another tone based question I yeah, want to ask. Yeah. It was from Akram. I hope I'm saying your name right. Hi, Mr. Blue. Curious as to what is your favorite speaker for high gain martial tones? I love the channel. So. Okay, high gain you. martial tones. Me being a vintage guy means um, I like vintage tones and they always exist also high gain vintage sounds i mean uh, you know all my heroes uh even back in the 60s more in the 70s already had some kind of high gain tone and one of the speakers that i still like a lot is a greenback this good old greenback you can do so much with it it has an elegance it has a a, a, a clarity it has a woodiness I'm a big fan of good green bags. Um, don't need to be the super old ones from the 60s, can be 80s stuff, um, before they moved the production to, to China. The UK ones were super. Um, and the green bag is basically the mother of all the British guitar speakers. And it's funny, it's like my old amps still do it. And even if we go Ingvi Malmsteen, it's like having old combined with a pedal that gives you this extra thing, but the tone is, is still there. That's my personal taste. Um, there are great, great speakers. Wait a minute, I, I just found the other day uh, on the complete opposite of my 300,000 photos. I found a picture when I was, there's a, I make pictures of everything I like. And this was, uh, maybe I have too many pictures on this. You know, there was a, some orange speaker that wasn't too bad, uh, but this was not the killer. I, no, I, f I found it the other day. I think this was, Ah, this is a blue guitar speaker. It's also not too bad. <laughs> um, where are we? No, this is this side. This is here. I don't think it... Uh, I have to spend a bit more time searching for it. Yeah, you you can search through and we'll show it next week or something like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but th there's there's tons um, of variations of, of that speaker. But um, honestly... 80s green bags, nice. And of course, my blue guitar speakers, I like them. Um, 70, uh, um, 65s is another one. Um, I, you know, Max Carton, who was there the other day, is a big fan of that, those, and myself too. I have some old ones that are exceptionally good, especially one speaker out of a 4x12. Uh, I don't find it. Too many photos. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the 65 ACDC speaker, killer, also for high gain. Because it has such a sweet focus mid-range that glues the tone together. Me, being the vintage guy, I always have a little bit... The, I want to, to, to have the high gain and the, the clarity. <laughs> The clarity is as important to me as the round tone. If you just need a round tone, you can sacrifice something of that clarity and get like a bit more woodiness. Can be nice. And the greenback has that clarity mm. and the woodiness. <laughs> hmm. Okay, anyway, this is. Weird answer, but this is my answer now. <laughs> <laughs> so basically try those things out and yeah. see what works for you. Because yeah. of course it's all related to the rest of your setup, you know. I mean, you play in a very specific way which is unique to you and you have your strat and you have, yeah. you know, the way you approach it. It's going to be different for everybody, isn't it? 
Absolutely. Yeah. I see. Um, invite Euge again. Yeah, yes. we, we get people asking for Euge, someone asking for oh, Alex Bayroth to come back. <laughs> Oh. And David says, can you do an episode with Oli Lohmann from Session Music in Frankfurt talking about his career, the time at Veritas Maximus, which I guess is a band or something maybe, sure. and maybe the comparison of vintage and custom shop guitars? Yeah, I mean, um, I actually talked to Oli about that just, you know, straight from the heart two years ago, even before this, this channel existed. It's like... Hey Oli, we should do something together because every time I go to Session Music Frankfurt, we do videos for them, and it's fun. You know, it's it's always fun. And uh, now we have our channel here. Um, I'm not sure if he is allowed to do that, but I why, I will ask. Why, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I will I, I will ask again. Uh, and uh, yeah, that this would be fun. So Oli, sure. Uh, if you watch this, this is an official invitation for you, you know, and um, we have by request of David Matei <laughs> uh, and myself. Um, Alex Bayro, sure, yes. Um, uh, Alex, his, his guitar is always here and he's he, welcome he, to come and get it, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. But uh, um, Alex just got um, dead again, so he has a, a young baby to take care of and so I guess I give him some time um, yeah I mean definitely Alex Bayroth is, is also a great guest uh, nice guy great hang killer player all you want um, but Euge is definitely on my list because he has been there only once and um, uh, yeah he's he's great and um, um, I probably call him next week and see what what his plans are for next year. Um, and if you have other guys that we should invite, let us know. Gregor well, Hilden. Yeah. Ah, that's another good one. That's yeah. someone you haven't had on the show, right? No, no. no. I mean, the, the thing about Gregor is um, he lives in Münster, which is five hours drive from here or mm -hmm. four. Um, so it's not in the area. Um, we play together. We did a, a whole tour uh, with three guitar players, myself, Gregor, and Jerry Donahue, like Taylor, Les Paul, and Stratocaster. Um, killer, player, nice guy. Um, yeah, if he would come to Saarbrücken in a way to get here in the studio, he is also officially invited hereby. <laughs> um, and we will do some something one day, if it's not music or a tour, you know, or live stream, whatever. If we can meet, if we have time, if, if then we do something. So, yeah, Gregor Hilton. Yeah, uh, Oliver Hartmann, people want to see as well, Manny Tseva, all the regulars, yeah. they want them to come back because they, okay. they enjoy well, it. Okay, well, yes, guess. sure. I just had an email from Manny Tseva last night because <laughs> of, you know, information going back and forward. So, Manny, um, Needs a bit time, but he, yeah, 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 we are, it's a, uh, Bernd Meiser, um, Bernd Meiser, I had another phone call yesterday, and he will return in January, maybe, kind of end of January. And uh, Nikos says, can you tell us some stuff about Bernd Meiser's spice box, the Blackmore Q filter, maybe do a demo of it or something, because apparently there is no demo on YouTube, and... I guess he'd like to see it. Maybe Bernd could bring one. Or I have one, over, one there. over there, but I didn't have the time to put it in. <laughs> and I have, uh, I have so many things on my list. I have some pickups that I wanted to put in the guitar, uh, some Dimasius. I have this filter. Um, the good thing is there's still tons of topics um, to be covered. And the people are all in my network. Bernd is not too far from where I live. Uh, half an hour drive which is cool and uh, you know I asked him something technically uh, last night uh, or yesterday afternoon and um, and just while talking to him he said you know what we can do an episode you know I've, I don't want to push people uh, like come to my live stream he, he has done it I was very happy but then he said, yeah, we, why not? You know, let's, let's do it properly. And he said, 
give me some time so I can prepare. I mean, this guy is the real mad professor guy, <laughs> which I like because he has the time or he invests the time to go through his old documents, to research a bit more so we can do a proper episode on a certain topic. Great. Extra value. And um, that's why we... I'm looking forward to this one as well. Ah, Absolutely. J Jason has the same question that I would have asked you next. And he says, who would be your dream guest if you could choose anyone you wanted to, to join you on the Academy of Tone? Maybe someone who's not even in your network. Who, who would it be? Sure. Um, <laughs> good question. Jeff Beck. Sure. So, so if anyone watching this knows Jeff Beck or if Jeff is watching, yeah. drop us an email. I, I met him once and... Uh, you know, I'm too much of a fan that I, I went talking guitars and stuff, which is all crap to talk with, with a guy like him. Um, and if, you know, if, if, if he would, I would ask other things. I mean, besides the guitar stuff, but it's more like, you know, this guy has lived in the 60s imagine that he he was in the yardbirds jimmy page joined the yardbirds with jim beck and he was jimmy page was the bass player and then jeff beck left and jimmy page became the lead player you know stuff like that how how it was behind the scenes and and all the stuff you know jimmy page as a session guitar player played on the first who single and pete townsend was upset because he wanted to be the number one guitar player, which is all good. And Jeff lived in those days in the scene. And from, you know, these bits and pieces of information that I can get being a German guy, um, you know, the puzzle is there. I would have a few questions that he would think, this guy is weird. How, <laughs> what, what is he asking now? Uh, you know, wh why is he interested in that? But this would kind of complete my picture of the British rock and blues invasion days, which were so powerful and exciting to me. Because just imagine, you know, the Beatles, the Stones, the Yardbirds, uh, the Who, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, you know, I mean, you know, guys like Richie Blackmore would also be cool. I don't know if he is such an easy one to talk to in a way, but maybe he is. Give him, give him two beers and <laughs> we have good beer here. So, Richie, if you watch this, you are officially invited again. Another hero. But it, it's like, you know, you know, stuff happened with these people. Like, there's, you know, Blackmore watched um, uh, Led Zeppelin with... Uh, uh, Robert Plant and they fired the singer and they uh, formed a Mark II version of their Deep Purple. How, I mean, you know, this was intense. And it, it was historically um, so important. And why I'm so excited about this, this is kind of when it happens the first time, it's, it is kind of they created the whole things. And, you know, Copy stuff, that's another thing. And we all copy, that's good. But the spark moment of creating music history or technology history, this is the stuff that I'm getting really excited about. And Jeff Beck is one of those. Blackmore, these cats, they have been around in... in they've been there. They They met Jimi Hendrix and they've been to the club when Jimi kind of killed them and then they probably hang out at a bar and talk, fuck, I'm getting unemployed now, you know? Um, and they came up with something even weirder and they had the little fights and whatever they had and the friendships and how they joined and whatever. This, this is the in, interesting stuff to me. What was the situation in which you met Jeff Beck? Was it at a, a concert or something? Were you playing or was yeah, he playing? Or? He was playing, he was playing in Bonn um, and I know the promoter, um, and uh, actually the promoter is a very important promoter. He 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 books all the ZZ Tops, Jeff Beck's Bonner Massas, and all the guys that are guitar heroes, um, Satriani, and and he is a good friend of mine. Um, 
And I wanted to invite him for the Academy of Touring. That's actually a good thing. I call him because the big bands are still not touring yet. So he is still available. I talked to him and I forgot about it um, because he knows all the guys, all the stories. He knows, you know, talking about Mark Knopfler, he can tell you all the fake, you know, in the video was this amp, in reality he played that thing because he knows the guys being a promoter, hanging out with the guys at the bar, having too much alcohol and this is when they speak a lot of <laughs> truth and shit and Georgie is his name, he, he, so anyway, but he, in, he asked me to, um, to come and so I watched uh, Jeff Beck and I met him backstage uh, with the whole band, Narada, Michael Walton, and, and then um, I was kind of a little bit shocked because um, we were sitting at a table and I talked to Narada, Michael Walton, and Jeff Beck was on the other side and then he disappeared, but I didn't, didn't watch him because I, I'm not, hello, you know, and then suddenly he, he, he came and asked something behind my back, sitting, you know, Narada sitting here, I'm talking to him and somebody standing behind me, it was fucking Jeff Beck, you know, talking to him and then, okay. And then we had a conversation. I, I just had a few things that I could bring to the conversation, which was cool. And well, you know, this was my holy grail Jeff Beck moment, which was totally nice guy, totally cool. I was uh, happy to have, have that. And similar experience with, um, with a lot of uh, in Joe Satriani is the nicest guy backstage uh, and David Gilmore same. I met a lot of these people and even back in the day Scary Moore was, you know, talking, uh, tipping on my shoulder. This was in my very early days with um, using Kettner. Somebody tipped on my shoulder and I was explaining something and turned around and fucking Gary Moore <laughs> in some overall blue. As he could have been the trash man, of, <laughs> but it was him back in the days. And, and he asked, yeah, is the stereo coming? <laughs> yeah, he was just at a London guitar show, Wembley or wherever that was. Uh, cool. Yeah, so, but um, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page. Um, and here is, I fucked it up. I had the chance to interview Jimmy Page once, goes back 10 years. Um, a friend of mine produced something and uh, Jimmy Page was releasing a book and they needed somebody they, uh, that understood a bit about guitars to do an interview with him and they would even f uh, uh, fl fly me to, to Berlin for this kind of thing and I couldn't do it. Why not? Because I had a fucking gig that I couldn't escape. It was, you know, yeah. I mean, ah! <laughs> You know, to be page. Yeah, that would have been a big one. Sure, yeah, but, you know. You might get another chance. You know, he might call up one day and say, hey, I've discovered this thing called the Ant One. I quite, I quite like it. You know, you know, the, the phone call is, I'm the guy that bought an MX because it does everything, but I know shit what it's doing. Can you help me? <laughs> and the funny thing is, I have a, a bunch of famous, really famous guys that, actually watch this and contact me because I'm doing this YouTube thing and it's like I'm not expecting I'm not saying the names but it's like uh, yeah this world is very small in a way and uh, you never know you never know somebody rings your phone number because you know they're watching stuff at home that's the cool thing about this show, because the, there's nobody else doing it yeah. quite like, but like how are, Blue Guitar is doing yeah, it. Yeah, we, we, we are, I mean, we are totally open to like any topic. We, we do care about stuff, and that's kind of interesting. And um, yeah, and it's uh, informative, hopefully. And um, we, have, um, we have a bunch of... Uh, Cool guys watching us. I know that. Hello. <laughs> <laughs>
William says Paul Gilbert. He'd be another cool guest, wouldn't he? Yeah, sure. He, play- he's one who knows his way around YouTube and presenting and talking to yeah, cameras yeah. and stuff as well. I, I played with Paul Gilbert in 2019 at the Guitar Summit. Yeah. And there's a little video where uh, we, yeah, cool guy. And Paul Gilbert, it's it's just this guy's so tall, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we have to get him a different chair. He, he can sit on the floor. <laughs> yeah. In the middle. And, and then he will be my size. <laughs> yeah. Hardy says that he met you in Esslingen, I guess, on a recent gig that you did, the Rock Anarchy gig, and you promised Hardy to show him how you play guitar with the Bebot app or something. And he's ah. curious to see exactly what that is. Okay, let's do it. Um, this is uh, this is my B-Bot. Maybe we can have... Uh, I show you... Where's the camera? This is the camera. So iPhone, blah, blah, blah. And there is um, an app that's called B-Bot. B-E-B-O-T. So I opened that app. And um, it is actually like a finger synthesizer. <laughs> So, um, you can modify the tones with, um, where's the settings? I, I changed it a little bit uh, when I got it because I wanted to be uh, my own sound. So, and this is coming from the speaker here. So, and when I go live in a live situation, I would be on the guitar. But what I'm doing, in a live situation is, I go... That's the B-Bot. Um, the, the principle is fairly simple. There's a speaker inside the phone and the magnetic feel of the driver of the speaker kind of gets picked up by the coil of the pickup. Yeah. And so this is why you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Phil X holding his phone up to it. Is that what he's yeah, doing? Yeah, it's, right? it's, it's, it's similar. Um, there's a, a few different apps. I, I, I've seen Phil X. I've seen, I think, Gilbert as well. I'm not sure. No, he's he's doing the, mm-hmm. the Eddie Van Halen, uh, um, what is it? Electrical screwdriver. I don't have one here. It's upstairs. Um, anyway, but the the thing, there's some other apps with which make other synthesizer noises. Anything works. I mean, you can play with play your favorite uh, song from it and <laughs> play to the audience. Um, yeah, but this is the way it works. Um, speaker, pick up. And this app, I modified the tone a little bit. It's, it is not, uh, when you get it, it sounds slightly different. Uh, you know, something that you do at night when you're bored and install a new app and think, oh, let's see what's this parameter doing, this one, preset done. Yeah. And is that something you've used live or is it just yeah. something you use to make? No, I, I, you know, when we are playing, we are a three piece most mm. of the time. And being a three piece, uh, you can do all this puristic approach of, you know, Hendrix stuff, and, you know, good old classic, tones and the, the stretch should sound as good as it can and then sometimes it's a relief to step into another world and having something like this this is why he is excited about it because it impresses people because it's a fresh really fresh element and anything you can do with a guitar that is surprise and then a <laughs> Thank you. 
Of course, then you, you go with the app, and then it's exciting, some fresh noise. Yeah, I mean, it's quite hard to find players from the modern era who do kind of new stuff with the instrument. When you think about when Van Halen came out and did the two-handed tapping thing, and everyone was just like, "What? What is this?" Exactly. Well, who are the new players out there who are doing things that you find innovative? Is is there anybody still still out there doing that? I mean, Tom Morello was the, the scratchy. Back in the 90s, he did all that. Yeah, it must have been early 90s, yeah. 91 when their first record came out or something. Yeah. So. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's hard. I, I don't know. I'm sure there are some people doing crazy stuff as well. Um, I don't get all that. Um, um, I, I think, you know, the whole tapping thing also came to to a point where if it's too much, I don't enjoy it that much anyway. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of it is about being musical, but at some point it crosses over into being like a technical. more of an Olympic technical yeah. sport or something. Yeah. I, can, I can tap better than you, but you stop thinking about the song. Yeah. And, and it's like even the simplicity of rock music, ACDC, the simplicity in something it's a mixture i mean you know i don't mind if something is complex for a while but if it's all night if it's stuffed too much it's like a dish with too many flavors it's like that's too much for me i like stuff that i understand that i can enjoy and if it's too much information it's overload it i don't enjoy it that's my personal thing. Other people live on a different energy level and they can handle it. Uh, for me, um, you know, I, I enjoy it if somebody goes crazy and plays fast for a while, but then... For instance, I just play... So what I'm doing here is I play two notes, but I play them. So they sing, uh, they, at the same time, and I have my. And then a little bit of a uh, low E string. That's the sound, you know? And then if you come and do the. You can do a lot of things even with subtle, uh, and I like that. I mean, I like dynamic. For instance, when I play my three-piece gigs, we have the moment where we play too loud and we play almost at the noise floor level. It's like, you know. Killed my <laughs> scheiße. <laughs> yeah, okay. Pinch harmonics or whatever that's called. Um, yeah. Keep it exciting and uh, noises can be fine. Chords. I mean, if, if you have a cool. If you come up with a cool chord or cool uh, chord progression or melody. playing no 
but it's I like. How low can I go? Yeah. And then of course you go Yeah, there's a whole generation of players that we can maybe open you up to. That's maybe a good idea. We should get some of the guys to recommend some more contemporary players to take a look at. For example, Hardy has just mentioned Yvette Young, who recently got some Ibanez signature guitars, but she plays some really different sort of music on her instrument. She's really mastered the guitar, but it's, it's probably totally different from anything you've ever heard. I'm struggling to describe it. Maybe, have you heard? Not really, her? but I, I, I heard a lot of... Uh, is this... I heard a few things. There is some neo soul kind of stuff where where they go with a uh, with funky and and tapping combined with harmonics and and you know weird things. It's impressive, but again, I I like that. But then where is I want that that normal quality again. Um, so if it's just condensed, and that's the problem about YouTube these days, it's like in, on YouTube you see people f f doing flashy things and it's totally exciting, but um, it has the one minute maximum time span and then I have enough. But that's the format. And if you go back, I just read about Jimmy Page, uh, to a vinyl, to a real proper one hour 30, 45, 50 minutes concert, you have a different experience because you you enjoy that spirit and that music for almost two hours or even more than two hours. And if you would just go on like that, it's like too much. And that's a that's the problem of this format of this media. I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, Matteo has. My, Matteo um, Asato? A Asato, yeah, killer player. I want his album. Do an album. I buy it, and I, I know you can do it. Was Matthias the guy though who had to take a break from doing Instagram yeah. because yeah. he was he, too good? He found the pressure of yeah. constantly coming up with short yeah. but technically perfect clips yeah. too much. Had to yeah. take a break from it. Perhaps that's that's the difference. Yeah, and, and I, I feel actually a bit sorry for for being in this trap, as there was a trap for the rock stars. I mean, good old Jimmy Page. I think he had an alcohol and other pro problems, uh, as many of the rock stars. Um, so every kind of time and media and situation has two sides. They bring you up. But uh, there's limitations to what you're doing as well. And um, I think it was a clever move for, for him to step back and take that break. Highly respect that uh, because, you know, it's, it's a wise decision. Uh, I like people that exist for a long term, like anything, like uh, instruments, uh, you know, just this one hit wonder is... Meh was never my, my kind of thing, but um, where I can see different uh, facets of the personality in the band. I mean, that's the thing about, for instance, Led Zeppelin, or so it, it's exciting to hear the different albums because it's the same guys doing a new album, and what's different? Killer. I mean, it's Led Zeppelin 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. It's, it's like every album is a new experience and the same with the Beatles it's like man half a year and they have a new album and it's uh, uh, it, it, that's exciting to me and you know the one guy that makes one big explosion disappears um, 
what what's after? What comes next? Uh, the next explosion? Nothing special to me. It's like, and that's a human thing, you know. In these back in these days, when things were kind of a bit longer, uh, the careers were longer, the concepts were longer, whatever was longer. <laughs> Uh, the long drinks were longer. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it was more human. And this, I could personally uh, adapt to this easier. That that's I enjoy this more. I I even enjoy going to a classical concert because it's a concert. It has a beginning. It has an end. It has a climax. It is a play. It is a you know and. Flipping through the YouTube thing has its own quality, but I see the problem because I'm the consumer myself. And it's like, no, no, no. And stuff like the old days is probably not working in this kind of fast world. Yeah, and a, a lot of it is about patience, but yeah. a lot of it is also about, you know, these days for having a fast hook. Yeah. Don't they say that modern radio hits have to have a hook every four seconds or something or sure. people will switch over? Yeah, but the Beatles already knew all that shit and they had a magic chord at the beginning. We'll get the copyright strike for you doing that. Ah, shit. This was the end of this. Two hours old. in and we're done, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope I hit it in the wrong key, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, in the end, if it's still human, that's what's exciting to me. You know, that that's the thing. In, you know, all the really big stars, they... They disappeared because they did stuff that was not human anymore. I mean, Elvis had a problem, Michael Jackson had a problem, you know, Keith Moon had a problem, Bonzo, uh, you know, the, the drummers all had a problem. <laughs> English drummers, anyway, because they grew up in pubs, you know. It's <laughs> like, how many pints can we drink? Oh, cool, you know. Um, but anyway, what I'm saying is um, that's. It's so intense what it does to people, uh, and it's it's it, for me it's magic to see if people can balance their lives in a way, and that's something um, I think like David Gilmour. He managed that. I mean, I saw an interview, and when when I met him, this guy was totally relaxed, and I think he is he is happy to be the father of his kids and drive to school and wash the dishes uh, and then maybe do an album or not and then cut the grass in, in the garden. Cool. Why being a rock star when you can be a gardener? <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. And to take it back down to the, to the normal human level, yeah. when is the nanocab going to be available again and is there an alternative? <laughs> um, the nanocab is actually on its way to Germany. So production is finished um, in early January. We expect um, to be uh, to have stock again, nanocap. Is there an alternative? There's tons of one twelve cabinets, but not nothing that small. And the nanocap is the nanocap. It's it's like a Stratocaster or a Telecaster or a Les Paul. The nanocap is for what it is. That's that size, and it has its own personality. So, um, some people even prefer that to a fat cap, which is my still my beloved fat cap. Every time I play it, I'm happy. Yeah, and I even prefer it to my old four by twelves. That's that's the, it's at the at the beginning. Sometimes you think I do a compromise because it's not only the weight thing. Once you adjust to certain things. It's like you change your life and you like it. It's like maybe you had a phase where you had a whatever a particular taste in whatever. When you're younger, you 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 drink lemonade, and sometime someday you maybe stop it, and you discover a new drink. And this is like I discovered my fat cap, and I love my fat cap. It's like I still drink British tea, you know. <laughs> it's either uh, Tedley's or a PG Tips. And it's, there's more boutique tea on the market. But some people told me, you know, Tedley's is that shit that they wiped off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
and put it in bags, pyramid bags, you know, English style. Oh, we have pyramid bags and you put a hot water on top of it and it's, I drink it with milk, the English style, and it's still my favorite drink. And there's more expensive tea and there's, it's, but it's, I found my taste and it makes me happy. And so is the fat cap for me and other people like the nano cap, for instance. Yeah. <laughs> And other people still want their 4 by 12 fair enough. But I changed to, you know, less alcohol, less weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's whatever floats your boat, really. Yeah. Alessandro is asking about Iridium on low gain mode, and I, I guess we should direct him to the episode where you've covered that in detail, haven't you? Yeah. I can't remember the number of the uh, but, episode. But hey, actually, I have a lot of new input on that. Um, I mean, I can do a, a real quick one here because it's there. Yeah, let's do a teaser for it now and we'll yeah. do a full episode yeah. on it. Switch over. Here is my magic remote. And then I can go and do login. As you see, it's full. Oh, no, you can't see. I'm putting it here. So this is now full gain. And now I put it on low gain. And if you go, I mean, this is low gain on classic. And there's so many sounds possible. Just one little story here. I had a, a jazz funk player in the other day with the Iridium because he was so in love with the clean channel. He brought all his pedals, Soldano, blah, blah, blah. End of it, I used low gain mode. I programmed the different channels to kind of what I thought he wants from his pedals. It took him one week and then he found out that the channels sound better than his pedals and he doesn't need the pedals anymore so his rig was shrinking the tone was improving and this was a total different approach from what I had in mind when I designed um, the, the Iridium and I heard beautiful fusion sounds and everything we go and do something on this again maybe I invite him because he was my inspiration uh, on this kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. I think that would be a good episode. Yeah. And Marcel also asks, do you plan an episode dedicated to the Telecaster? I mean, we, we did do quite a big feature recently on yeah. the telly, didn't we? But not a whole episode. My, my problem is I don't own a killer Telecaster and I want one. And the other day when I was in Hamburg, I nearly had one, but then it kind of slipped away. And... Uh, I'm not going the 50,000 price range. That's not my budget. But, you know, some kind of uh, parts telecaster with good components would do. Um, I like tellies when they are as good as some. Um, so my telly is just okay. And um, I have my friend that is a collector he has this uh, 53 telly which sounds great but plays shit <laughs> because it has original frets it's good oh, yeah. it's good for the collector but it's shit for me as the player mm. and therefore i don't get excited with this guitar so much i if i play a few chords it's fine but then when i try to make some music with this guitar it's like you know and what i want is a guitar that has both and I know these guitars are out there and um, I have this on my wish list as well. So there is lots of stuff coming up, yeah. plenty more Iridium stuff. We want to do a bit more focusing on Iridium as well, don't we? So yeah. if you guys have any specific questions about Iridium style topics, about metal players we could cover, then we welcome those suggestions. So again, write them here, social media, email us and we'll look at them all. Yeah, here is a question. Uh, can you also show how to get mercury to zero again and store it without rem uh, using remote one? Uh, that's a MIDI thing. <sighs> uh, 
I know it's definitely working with the Iridium. I'm not sure if the Mercury can do it with MIDI only. See, that's a question. Please send to service at blueguitar.com because we have this amp and this amp and the MIDI and CC20 and I forget about details. Um, good question. Yeah, we have to look it up. And by the way, we are working on a knowledge base that will solve all the issues and have one channel for all these uh, crazy questions. Well, they are not crazy, they are uh, good questions, but it's kind of, you know, uh, when there is Amp X, for instance, we have so many questions and so many, I will not be able to remember that. And so me and the team who's programming the middle MIDI side of Amp1 and Amp X can answer on this side your question from the other side. Okay, at, at this point it's still service at blueguitar.com. Um, have you tried Barefoot Audio Reformer 112? Pretty cool concept in cabinets. Uh, 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 no, not yet, but uh, Barefaced Audio Reformer. Bear faced. You know that? No, nope, not familiar with it. Are people saying where's where's our colleague Julian? He would know if it was possible. But sure. appa apparently he said it wasn't possible to do that on the Mercury edition. Yeah. See? Yeah, if Max says that Julian said, because <laughs> Julian wrote the software, then it's not possible on the Mercury. And I have I had this feeling too. So we can answer right now, if Julian said, um, then you need to have a remote one to send the value to set the channel. This is the holy grail device to do so. So if you have this, you can make the M1 Mercury Edition the most flexible amp there is. With Iridium, you have more options. Yeah. And Julian wrote the software. If he says so, that Julian said, that's the truth. But we'll make sure to ask Julian and yeah. get an answer up on the on the FAQ site and in the knowledge base. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's Julian? Well, <laughs> good question. <laughs> he is at home programming for the MX. That's what I told him to do. And um, we had, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, and he's working on some other things. Uh, because he's been to the company earlier uh, and getting some uh, measure devices for home. Because he, he works sometimes from home and sometimes uh, it's more effective because he, he just spends his life sleeping, working, sleeping, working. And this is what it requires to, to do such a crazy uh, job like an Amp X. Um, in, and then, yeah, eating. It's having some food once in a while is also Occasionally, important. once a week, he, yeah. <laughs> he, he has some food to feed his brain, yeah. Yeah. Um, could you introduce once to the Blue Guitar? Uh, could you introduce once the Blue Guitar team? Ah, okay. Uh, you mean oh, the, the whole people. Well, this is rich. <laughs> There's Lucas on the other side of the camera. Maybe you can shrink your head. <laughs> yeah, so there's one more. And there's uh, a bunch of other guys not being here tonight, uh, which is good because they have to, to stay at the office like Kai. <laughs> um, and we have a bunch of other freelancers, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, maybe we do this one, one day uh, in summer when we are outside and make a video outside with all the people, something like this. Um, we are a small company, but nice people. Um, do you, maybe a small factory tour. Yeah, that's um, Max Carton, by the way, did a little tour of the studio here on his channel. We might post this as well. I, I think I sent you a link. We just yesterday or something yeah we, um, will, we will post it well that he did uh, when he was here so you see this room and the other room and there are more rooms and um this is my 
private, uh, well, this is my, my home and this is one part of it and the other thing is the office building which is down there <laughs> uh, in the center of town. Um, yeah, we, we, we can do this, but I think we are not as an impressive company with big machines and stuff. It's like um, I try to keep the whole operation as small as possible because, yeah, I've seen all the rest and it's impressive, but uh, not needed. These days you can do a lot with a lot less. And that's my philosophy. Less is more. That's a good philosophy. Ah, Kai is a great singer, sure. He was on an Academy of Tone last year when we had... Here I come again, maybe. We, I think he sang that song. Yeah, I remember. I wasn't there that night, but there was another guest, wasn't there? There was another guest. Who was guest. it? I can't remember. I can't remember either. I mean, you know, see, this is knowledge base. We suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we need a knowledge base for our own reference. Yeah, exactly. So, and this is, this is something we work on, and Kai um, worked on that too, a lot. And today, for instance, I spend time with Kai working on articles on the knowledge base to make sure that the information is correct, that the information is complete and then you guys will have access to that one day. And of course that's only a starting point because you come with new questions and we will supply that. So that's a, a thing I want to uh, provide to you as a, a platform that is growing. And ja. Tag der offenen Tür for Blue Fans. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> ah, somebody has an Ampman Classic. Sorry, I know not a blue guitar, but which blue guitar cap would you suggest for the HK? Um, I mean, for that little amp, get a nano cap. I, I would say that's a, a nice combination. Why not? David says, Whitesnake episode 33 with Manuel and Kai. Yes. There we go. These guys know it. They, they are know, the knowledge base. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of you, <laughs> David. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what dry wet head question? What uh, did he answer the wet VDV? Uh, w, I think wet dry wet question. No. Will there be a triple power amp from Blue Guitar sometimes? No. Um, no triple power amp. I mean, it's like I would probably do little mono blocks or, or something, but not a triple. Uh, I don't see this at this point. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong about wet, dry, wet, but you know, just like at the beginning of this episode, we talked about amp one and amp X and different formats. I'm more the kind of guy that uh, will offer a scalable system so that is targeted to a, a, a bigger user group and I think mono guitar is how many guitars on this planet are played in mono probably 80 percent probably even more so if you are stereo you are the exception from that majority there will be a smart solution like the blue box on this and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, and then a triple setup um, requires something else. But, you know, the percentage of wet, dry, wet players, even though it's great, I'm not saying anything against this, is very little. And somehow I want to please as many people as possible with smart solutions but we can't provide everything. So I can't do a three channel power amp into one housing for 300 people. If you come here and pay a million, we do it. Put the money on the table first <laughs> and then we do it. Mm -hmm. Because this is actually almost how expensive that is. It's not we have a block that we have a screw in into a wooden box and there's your amp. No, no, we would do it properly. A proper design, a proper thing, and you end up spending hours, investments, certifications, everything, 
100,000 is nothing if you create something like that. Just the certification for an amp like this is 20,000. And you're not making any money. This is certification that is not designed. This is not tools. This is nothing. So, you know, anything under 100,000, we can't do anything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I change your string for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pruninger says he'll see about the million and get back to us later. So we, okay. we look forward to talking to you in, in 2022. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. maybe you, you are rich next year and then uh, come and see us. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Getting us one little bit richer. Let's do this as a good last question, I think, because Jason says, where can we buy the Thomas Blug Masterclass? He saw it was an advent calendar prize. Unfortunately, he didn't win because someone else did. I can't remember yeah. who won it, but I where hope, can the guys get that stuff? Let's, let's, I hope it's in our web store. If not, I'll put it there. And uh, I have a few left. I, you know, this, this is kind of not uh, of a... It was with Alfred Verlag. Alfred Publishing is some publisher. Um, there are a few left, uh, one box. So I should put it on the Blue Guitar website. Let me check if it's not there. I'll put it on there for you. Yeah. So that was that was it. That was that was a lot of questions. And again, thanks guys for for being here and asking all those questions. And if you're still here, yeah. we would love it if you would like the video and if you would uh -huh. drop a subscription onto our channel and ring the little bell. Ding dong! That would make Thomas extremely happy, so, yeah. so please do it. Yeah, I mean, th this is the thing going back to the modern media. It's not, um, um, you know, we don't need it for the ego. It's more that we can do what we do and that it's worth doing it. And uh, this is the game we have to play there, um, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, that helps um, because then the algorithm knows there's people out there that really watch it and uh, therefore we have to ask you to leave that little uh, mark for the, which helps us. That's great. Ah, here is uh, Hardy O, maybe MX and M1, M3 uh, is the right team. Yes. The, uh, this, uh, <laughs> They actually yeah. work together. Yeah. So, thanks guys. Cheers. Um, next week, ah, next week I have a French guitar player from coming from the south of France. Man, this is a long way. And it's uh, another Julian, but a French Julien, not a Julian, um, Kayiba, who plays about 300 gigs a year. In, in very uh, nice locations. He plays like um, functional bands in holiday resorts and, and stuff like this. And he, he started out with an amp one because it's easy to travel and fly, uh, fly gigs. And then of course playing 300 gigs, he thought, okay, I get the blue box for fun. And then he got another amp one and then he had a, a stereo rig and then one day he had a wet wet rig because um, he, he got excited about it. And he made the same experience like with pedals when he had the M1. He still trusted his old pedals more than the M1. But the more he played the M1, the more pedals disappeared. And that's kind of a very nice um, uh, insight in, in a really hard working and gigging uh, life. And um, I find this also quite interesting because there's certain character, character categories, right? Yes. <laughs> of guitar players. You know, there's the guy that goes to the rehearsal room, uh, drinks a case of beer with the bandmates, having fun one, once a week and playing one gig a year. Um, and there's the, the people that let that they do whatever and this guy um, is doing a professional job as not a touring musician but as somebody that plays certain venues for a certain period of time then moves to another place 
and it's quite interesting. I've done so, so, something like that myself instead of a vacation. So the deal was I can play there, stay there for free, get free flight and food, uh, but have to play three times a week. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens is if you are staying in these places with your bandmates, you get really good. It's like when the Beatles had to play Hamburg in their early 20s, like two shows a day. And this is next week's guest, Julian, and we can talk about stuff, what you're doing when you play songs where there is not even the guitar in there, you know, because people want to dance and then um, you play from jazz, mambo to metal and of course synth pop with no guitar in there. Mm -hmm. I've been there too and I found this very interesting. So next week, something completely different as they say on what is it? Uh, Monty Python. Monty Python. Indeed. Faulty Towers is another one that I have to watch again. <laughs> <laughs> In my world. Exactly. So something completely different coming next week. Yeah. In the meantime, play the Blue Guitar Advent Calendar if you like. Yeah. You might win the Golden Brownie tonight. You yeah. might win one of the other cool prizes that's coming up. And we will see you at 8 p.m. Central European time next Wednesday for episode 86. 86. Correct. Yep. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.